Hello, you're welcome to Johnson Praise TV. This is your digital classroom. This video is all about UGROC 228, that is Chieftaincy and Development. I've received so many calls from some of your colleagues this semester as to why I've not been releasing videos because the videos I released last semester helped them. Some of them really dedicated their grades to me for really helping them to make their A's and B's. And I'm so excited with the little impact I'm making with your academics. I'm very, very happy about that. This time around, you know, this semester I've been very tight with my political activities and so many things. But I decided to just use this opportunity to create this video for you because um i know how some of you are struggling um you know this video i'm going to solve in this video i'm going to solve eight to ten questions with you which will help you to write your chief tenancy exam i'll be releasing video on culture that is ugrc229 and ugrc231 that is what gender and development there will be video on that and there will be video too on the INFS 214 and INFS 212. So just subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed, make sure you smash that notification bell. Click on the subscribe button to give me a follow. You know, everything we do in this university is centered on our academics, okay? And you need leaders that really esteem your interests. You need leaders that will care about you. The exams you are going to write, I've, I've heard most of you complaining that you have, you, you are going to write about three papers a day. Some of, uh, some of you are complaining of tight schedules. And it is what some people that will do all these works. And there's a special group of people that have been doing this. And I want to take this opportunity to appreciate their effort. This is in the person of Guru and Jalit. Guru and Jalit have been there for students. I know, I know the kind of work our brother Jalit has been doing have been helping. Most of these past questions I share with you, he is the one who normally helped me with the past questions. You get it? He has also um, been, I've seen him advocating for extension of school fees. Some of you didn't really know how you even managed to even uh, escape or skip the, the, the deadline it is because of so his selfless effort all right i have seen him okay he has been able to come up with a scholarship a scholarship opportunity all right which is which i would like to share with you kitwebian swap policy right the kitwebian kitwebian swap policy which has been able this is the evidence i don't just talk anyhow right this is the radio universe that is they have said okay management extends deadline for medical for medical exam, examination following students what petition right and it is our brother who is already there if you don't know jelit is the one with what tie right he, he was part and he has been very active okay i have seen him this is radio universe so saying that Jalit Kitwebi and Sha initiative clears outstanding what school fees now please for course registration. So he has seen him clearing outstanding fees for people and also pleading for what for 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 course registration extension. You get it. He has been there for students. And I think we need to reward him. He is on the ballot paper which our brother Guru, the Guru we know, okay, N K Z. Yes, he's the one, right? So let's give them the mandate. On 26th of this month, there is going to be election. That's University of Ghana SLC elections. Let's vote for Guru and Chilit because they esteem your interest and they will do more for you, right? If you want to vote for them, let me see. Just type yes, yes under the comment section. Type yes under the comment section. Okay, so I won't take much of your time. Let me get started. So I'm going to solve so many questions that is 2020 2017 2018 past question and then 2021 20 2020 2021 right so there are so many questions we'll be delving more into so the question one says that 
the language is an important actor in chieftains in this case so we are going to discuss the importance of a language okay the second question says that what is your opinion on the notion that european colonization of africa saw the steady aggrandizement of non royal power and dead and what and decline of what royal control over people over people and resources so we are going to discuss all these questions another one also says that right should knows on on what any two of the following points out of the relevance to chief tenshi in ghana so you are going to write about uh, pre uh, what priestess priestesses and then servants you are going to choose any of them and write about them so question four says that examine the role of islam in chieftaincy in west africa so we are going to examine that question five says that discuss the extent to which which the following issues in chieftaincy affect development that is succession dispute festivals and land dispute so we are going to do that and after this there are other questions that we will be solving other set of questions so this is part one the part two will also follow so let us now solve this part part one when we are done i'll read the part part two for you then we we'll move together so it says what compare and contrast chief tenancy a uh, chief and what with what chief tenancy so we are going to look at the role of chief and then chief tenancy they are not the same okay if you say chief chief is a different thing altogether okay chief and uh, chief and then uh, chief tenancy they are not the same so let's look at it one of the um one of the um you see when you talk of chief a chief is what is an individual leader or a ruler of a community tribe or clan so chiefs they are individuals right but chief tenancy is not an individual okay it's an institution okay so a chief is what is an individual leader or a ruler of a community when you talk of a community a group of people who live in the same geographical area and share what common uh, uh, interests or whatever well, when you talk of tribe to people who are related by blood uh, consanguinity or adoption you know when you talk of clan to it's like people who are coming from the same genealogy right we can talk about uh, Ju uh, uh, um, I mean Judah or the tribe of Jesus Christ right uh, the tribe of um the tribe of um, um you know Judas uh, Judah Judah is also one of the tribes of what uh, uh, I mean the 12 tribes of Israel so so Jesus also come from what that specific tribe so Jesus that's what we call him what the tri what the lion of Judah do you get it so it is a clan and when you say somebody is a chief it's someone who rules either a community a tribe or some specific group of people okay it's a chief but when you talk of what a chieftaincy chieftaincy is not like that chieftaincy talks about an institution that covers that covers the chiefs right so i want to first share the the the, the role of what chiefs okay or i want to give you this the 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 the, the differences okay talk about chiefs first before i talk about the other one but if you like you can just do the money talk about a chief you you do the contrast you contrast it with the the chief tenancy but i mean i want to take all the chief's function and then when i'm done I'm, i discuss the chief tenancy with you second is that the chief is often the central figure in the political social and econ and, and what and cultural life of the of the community so the chiefs they are what they are figures either political social or cultural uh, i mean they play an important role in this aspect in the more in the old days the chiefs used to collect tax okay that's a political function they make sure that they sell lands and, and and use it to develop the community the chiefs also uh, they are the custodian of the um i mean the cultural values of the community okay they settle disputes so these are what the functions of what of the chiefs do you get it so when you look at this now you compare it with what with chief tenses when i'm done i'll take the uh, the chief tenancy one after the other the chiefs also what they typically inherit their position through lineage or selected or they are selected based on specific 
cultural practices and qualifications so with chief before you become a chief you must come from a specific what tribe you must come from a specific lineage or you have to be selected based on what either your cultural practices or qualification mm. in the olden days sometimes some of these the ways they select chiefs is through what conquest or war you go to war you fight and if you if you win whosoever manages to lead the people to war becomes the chief do you get the point so there are what, some specific or some specifications there are some st uh, 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 qualifications or criteria that they use in selecting chiefs okay and and also the chiefs typically okay so also the last point i want to share with you is that the they play key roles in conflict resolution administrat administration of justice and maintaining social order so like i stated earlier the chiefs play an important role in conflict resol resolution now even if you go to some of these uh, homogeneous society okay if i say homogeneous society the societies that are not developed yet and eh? the less developed soci societies you still see chiefs performing their roles okay by resolving disputes if you do something which goes contrary to the norms of the uh, society they would they, you will be asked to pay some fine okay i went to my community recently and i wanted to tell you you know i'm contesting for mp in my constituency that's as soon as for south and i wanted to paste flyers my my posters and i i, I was told that no you can't paste posters without informing the, the the chiefs right you have to visit them first for them to know you before you paste it if not they will what they will find you I was like, wow, so you get it. In Accra here, you can go paste it without even informing chiefs, but go to the homogeneous society, societies, these things still, it still works. So the chiefs make sure they, what, they ensure that there is maintenance of what? Law and order in the society. So that is it. Now we'll, we'll move forward. Okay, so um let's look at the chief tenancy too like i told you chief tenancy is a separate institution it, it it's the it's the institution that regulates the conduct of the chiefs right so they rather regulate the activities of the chiefs you get it so chief tenancy refers to the system or institutions of leadership and governance involving chiefs so they regulate the activities of the chiefs okay ensure that they follow the due process how they are selecting and everything so also chief tenancy it encompasses it's what it encompasses the structures traditions traditions and practices that define the rules and functions of chief within the society so like i told you they are structures okay the chief tenancy is 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 the structure that has been laid down Okay, to regulate the activities of what the chiefs, it gives them it it, it tells it tells the chief okay it it, um, it defines their role in the society their functions, how they are being selected, how they should actually organize themselves, how they should behave, how they should um 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 go about issues in the society. It is what it is a chief tendency, right? Their functions things they are to do and things they shouldn't do. Also, chief tenancy includes the processes of what, selecting, enthroning, and supporting chiefs, as well as as well as what rituals and symbols associated with their authority. So chief tenancy includes what the process in which we select them. Okay, how how can one become a chief? Okay, you must come from what the royal home. Aside that you you must live a life on and a life of what example you must live a life of, a, of an example. You must also, you must also be able to, um, you know, in the olden days, they select chiefs for, for for the sake of wars. In case there is war, you should be able to lead them. So you must be brave. You must you must fall within certain criteria before they select you as a chief. So the lay down process in 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 getting those people is the chieftaincy, right? Mm -hmm. And, and and how how they are being enthroned okay before we, we we make you achieve the process you go through you need to be enthroned okay how they are being dethroned how they support okay the rituals that are that is associated with 
the with their authority all these things are part and also it is a broader rule that it is a broad it is broader than what the rule of a single chief in comparison of the entire framework that supports and legitimize their traditional leadership so like i told you chief tenancy is bigger key okay? is bigger is 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 the rule is what is broader than the the chief okay so in chief in chief tenancy you can have a group of chiefs within a chief tenancy but when you say chief it's we are talking about a single person so i think this question you can be able to con compare and contrast and tell me what is chief tenancy and what is the chief let's move to question two the contribution of chiefs to the development of ghana so we are going to look at the, the development so in ghana chiefs have what have historically what played an important role in the economic development of their community so we are coming to look at what the economic contribution this is what the economic contribution look at mind you they can ask you to uh, only to talk about the political contributions of chief or the social contribution of chiefs but this one we are talking about economic contribution so you must limit yourself you you must limit yourself with the things you write it's not everything you should write here the thesis statement has been clear that you should talk about the economic situation the economic contribution so now we have land management so chiefs control and allocate communal land which is what essential for agriculture housing and commercial activities so by facilitating land leases and sales the and enable activities they enable economic activities and attract what investment so like i said the chiefs they make sure that they manage lands so the chiefs are the custodians of our custodians of our land in the society they really would ensure that the lands are located to the rightful owners and and then they take the money to develop the community they use it for scholarship projects and other stuff for the people to benefit right so that is it and also the development project they also do development project chiefs do development project okay i can remember of o two scholarship scheme i can remember of a, a, a race i can remember recently o two was making some contributions to renovate confanochi hospital okay this how the the, the 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 contributions of our chief i've seen chiefs trying their best to construct roads i've seen chiefs trying their best to build hospitals schools and so on and so forth these are the economic economic contributions of chief and they are their development projects that they embark on so chief often initiate and support local development projects such as what construction of schools health centers roads and mobilize community resources and also seek external fundings for their projects so chiefs they organize what fund reasons and seek to uh, i mean support from the people to be able to fund their project also conflict resolution this is also one of the key importance of what chief tenancy they about they maintain what social order by resolving dispute chiefs create a stable environment environment conducive to what to economic activities and development so the chiefs the what the they ensure that they resolve conflict in the society anytime there is conflict it is the chiefs that we visit first before even gets to court right so the chiefs ensure that they resolve conflict that is between the people in the society before even goes what to court so that is one of their functions okay and also um the chiefs what they ensure that they promote what culture they promote culture right so they ensure that uh, our festivals are being what uh, they, they, we pr they promote what festival tourisms and so on and so forth which can generate revenue and create job opportunities homo war and all those uh, festivals people from outside visit as through that the and and by so doing they buy certain things which gives us some foreign exchange and and it also contributes massively to our economy so we have solved the question two let's look at the question three so um we are looking at what the means of evolution in an african community the question stated that we should talk about the means of evolution of what 
of chieftaincy in an African community, how chieftaincy evolved, how it came about, the emergence, okay, we are talking about the emergence of chieftaincy, how it came about, right? So one of the ways that chieftaincy evolved is what to trade and how do we explain it? So trade played a crucial role in the in the evolution of chieftaincy by what establishing wealth and influence for certain individuals or families who cheat with um, trade because people used to trade among themselves they were able to create wealth among themselves and true and by so doing they needed people to lead them not to what not to uh, uh, in case maybe there is dispute or whatever okay so that is also one of the ways also successful traders could gain prominence and be recognized as what leaders due to their economic power and ability to bring their uh, prosperity to their community so for example in west africa the sub uh, sub-saharan tra uh, sub-saharan trade route enable certain chiefs to control and and tax trade that's enhancing what their authority and resources so what we are trying to say is that the chief uh, the trade gave people the mandate right he gave people the mandate to trade among themselves and by so doing they gained some wealth and became powerful in the society so they made them what leaders and through that we had chieftaincy image that is it one of the ways also traditional priesthood it's also what one of the ways that um, i can say that contributed to what the emergence or the evolution of chief chancy in africa so that is it so traditional priesthood often provide a spiritual basis for chieftaincy with the religious leaders gaining political power right so priests were believed to communicate with ancestors or deities and could use their spiritual authority to what authority to uh, legitimize their leadership rules so in many african communities the combination of spiritual and and what contemporary power strengthened the the positions of chief and they were also seen as both political and religious leaders so you know in the olden days the chiefs were being con um, in the olden days people who had uh, spiritual powers were being consulted right because they have access to the goals and stuff so through that to it, it, it evolved it, the chieftaincy institution evolved through that because that one was also seen as a characteristic of what of a chief if before you become a chief you must also have that spiritual backing so that if anything bad is about to happen to your people you should be able to know be an intermediary between your people and their their goal between your people and and what and your god so that is also one of the ways and also so okay i think we have spoken about it too now it says we should write two notes about short notes okay we should write short notes about nomination and installation and then yeah so that is it so let's look at nomination how, what is even nomination? So nomination is a process of selecting candidate for the position of chief within a traditional leadership structure. So the way you select chief in the traditional leadership structure is what we call nomination. The process varies what it varies across cultures, but often involves what consultation with the royal family families, elders, and influential community members. Nominees. Nominees I mean the person that you have nominated, right? Nominees are typically chosen based on lineage, merit, and potential, uh, or their potential to uphold cultural values and lead if efficient, effectively, right? So the no the nomination process is crucial for maintaining legitimacy and continuity within the chieftaincy system. So when you talk of nomination, uh, you can for how the process involved in selecting chiefs okay how they are being nominated the consultation that really happens the the lobbying the 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 the, the, the kind of things that happen before chiefs are, are being appointed this is what we call the nomination process some in some families they do consultation you make sure you the nominee you you don't have any record criminal record you don't you are not 
uh, uh, I mean, you are very courageous, you, you, you are trustworthy, you are bold, and, and they look at all these things before they, they choose you, okay? So, and mostly it is based on lineage or merit, okay? Lineage, whether you are from a royal family or you are very strong academically or probably spiritually and whatever all these things are part before they they look at all these things before they give you the chief the chief tenancy. they give you the, the the position as a chief also let's look at installation or installment okay it can come uh, it can come as an installment or an en- en- enskillment let's let me get, break these two things for you installation of chief is not different from installment or enskillment Instrument is um, practiced by the, the people in the southern part. Okay, instrument. You go to a Ashanti region, they do instrument. This is where they give you the the the, the, the stool to sit on. And takunyana edema otmasomo. And on your friend is an instrument. But instrument is the northern part where they, they put you on the skin of, let's say like a cow or a lion or whatever. <laughs> that is their way of what making you or, or probably what uh, 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 setting you up as a chief so the installation uh, so the installation stool or skin refers to what the ceremonial seat or symbol of what authority used during what the enthronement of of a, of a chief okay among the accounts of ghana the stool is what is sacred an object that represents the the soul of the community and the continuity of leadership. So Ashanti, they have what Sikeja, that is what they are stool. So that's what the kind of stool that they put uh, the king, okay, or say to two on it, right? So it represents a symbol of what power. It represents what the soul of the community and they see it as sacred. It's not everybody that can sit on. Who are you to sit on that stool? If you have not been elected, if you have not been what nominated, hmm? There's no way you can sit on it unless you are from the royal family or you've been, you've been assigned purposely to sit on it. If not, you can't sit on it, else you'll be dealt with, right? And also, the the installation ceremony involves rituals and oaths, with the chief sitting on the stool or the skin to signify the acceptance of the, of the rule and responsibility. So they perform rituals and they put the chief on the stool to ensure to, to show whether he accepts that position or not also the process is what is very essential in for legitimizing the chief's authority and what and connecting them to the ancestors and the spiritual heritage of the community so that is it so we are done with one past question this is let's look at the next past question which is what the year has been stated 2017-2018. It says that the language is an important actor in chieftaincy this case. Also, what is your opinion on the notion that European colonization of Africa saw the steady aggrandizement of non-royal power and the decline of royal control over the people and resources? So we have to discuss this. And also write short notes on any two of the following and point out their relevance to chieftaincy in Africa. So they say you should write two. I have what stool, you have priestess, you have what servant. So we are to write about any of them. And then the fourth one says that examine the role of Islam in West Africa. This case to the extent this case the extent to which the following issues in chieftaincy affect development. So, which is what succession, succession dispute, uh, f- uh, festivals, land sales. So let's look at. I'm taking the last question, which is a, to the extent to the to uh, to the the extent to which chieftaincy issues affect development. That's what we are coming to do. So we are looking at what succession dispute succession dispute in in what extent does succession dispute affect chieftaincy okay affect the development right so let's look at the impact impact on, on development that is succession when you talk of succession how the the people that take over 
uh, uh, I mean, over from the dead, right? When someone dies, how we replace people, okay, by sharing their properties and stuff. So that succession, mm, the dispute that arises, in that, in what way does it affect development? That's what they are asking you. So succession dispute can lead to prolonged conflict and instability, diverting resources and attention away from development project. They can lead to a community cohesion and hinder uh, effective governance. So the the succession dispute can lead to a conflict and instability. So okay, when there is succession dispute, there will always be what conflict and and, and what and instability. Example is what the uh, um, I don't know more about that, but you know there are so many uh, tribes in this country that normally involve themselves in fights. Okay, the um, how do you call it? The 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 Dagomba and Kusasi. Well, I don't know really the basis, but let's even let me use that one as an example. Or you go to they say in Kunya and whatever dispute in the uh, voter region. Okay, this kind of dispute that happens uh, keep on happening like that. Eh? It has an impact. It has an impact on on development. It has an impact on development. So it diverts resources. Okay. And attention away from development because anytime you keep on fighting people will investors will not come to your community they will not invest now it will be very difficult for people to even go to places okay that there's sort of conflict because they are afraid that they will lose their investment what if they collapse the they, they, they shut down the community okay or they put an embargo on the whole community for for one week means that business is going to collapse right nothing will happen so so in some communities, in some communities, um, unresolved succession disputes have what resulted in violence and destruction of property, delaying, delaying or halting development initiative. Let's look at festival too. In what way does festival affect development? Okay, so festivals it can lead to both positive and negative impacts on development. They promote cultural heritage and tourism generating revenues and creating jobs. However, they can also strain community resources and disrupt regular economic activities. Festivals can have can have a, uh, can have a positive and a negative what, impact. So the positive as aspect is what I've discussed with you already. It brings, inve it brings investment, it brings uh, foreigners, and it gives us some kind of resources. But there are some festivals, when they are celebrating, they have to if you are a trader or whatever, you need to lock your shop. If it is two days, no one is supposed to go to farm, no one is supposed to do anything. And it can in impede development, right? So this is a very simple question. Let's look at the next one, which was land sales. Land sales too is one of the most crucial aspects in the community. Sometimes the people that you buy land from, eh? can cause a lot of problems for you so you need to authenticate it to know where you were buying it from before and let me take this opportunity to tell you okay um we have lands okay in kasua area okay the details and everything is there if you want to know more about these lands okay you go in for um three thousand right three hundred and fifty thousand no not three hundred and fifty that's um yeah three hundred and fifty thousand right no if mm, okay so I'll confirm I'll confirm it and then get back to you but if you're interested you can you can DM me on the number that I've given okay so yes if you need the land so let's look at the land aspect eh how does it bring dispute right assuming you've sold land to person A if you want to sell sell it to another person. It will bring disputes, right? Mm, so these things are very, very important. So the sale of land can lead to what? Can generate what? Funds for development project, but can also lead to disputes and loss of what? Communal asset. Mismanagement can can no, manis, mismanagement of land sales can result in what? A grabbing of what? Marginalization of vulnerable community members. So when you sell land, 
and you don't sell it in the rightful way you can bring a lot of what issue you can sell someone's land and it will bring issues so in some regions chief has sued large tracts of land to investors without proper consultation with the community leading toward displacement and social unrest let's look at this it says what the question says that question two says that well, so I, if i have to continue this is the the c's question right it says that the link the language is an important actor in chieftaincy so we have to discuss the importance of what language so in africa in african society particularly among the akan akan people of ghana language which which is known as what ochiami plays a crucial role in chieftaincy system the language serves as the spokesperson for the chiefs acting acting as what intermediary between the chief and the people this position is very important for several reasons so let's look at it so first the language the language plays the role plays the role of what or ensures that there's effective communication so the language what the language communicates the chief's decision messages and what and pronounce pronouncement to the people ensuring clarity and adherence to cultural protocol so the the language when the chief is talking the language anytime the chief talks the language will interpret the chief's words and um, so when it does that it ensures what there is what coherence okay clarity you get you know chiefs usually likes to speak in proverb but the ochiami will interpret the chief's word very well for you to understand it so to ensure clarity I remember recently when I visited on my campaign, I visited a, a community, one of the chiefs, and the chief was speaking in proverb. There were certain things I didn't really understand, but Ochiami made it very clear to me, and I got everything. I got everything, right? So advisory rule, rule too. They play advisory rule. So the language provides counsel to the chief, offering insight and advice on several matters including political social and cultural issues so the chief, the language also gives out advice not only uh, they don't they give advice to the chiefs and also uh, giving them on their decisions especially political decisions chiefs want to go and campaign say so, nana this is not the right time to campaign for this party nana or oh, yes this is what i think you should take this decision but they give what they play a role that role to the chief also cultural preservation so by mastering traditional language proverbs and and oral heritage oral history the language has to preserve and transmit cultural heritage uh, a, a cultural knowledge and heritage so because of how they normally talk right and interpret certain proverbs they become what custodian to uh, the cultural heritage of the community especially the, the language and then the queen mother they are the people that are really close and when it comes to interpretation of certain norms and stuff they are the people that really do that let's look at the other aspect conflict resolution so the language often plays a role in medi in mediating disputes and conflicts within the community using their eloquence and knowledge of customary law so anytime there's issue in the community the language or the ochiami will do that because they are very elo eloquent and and when they interpret or speak people really listen to them yeah they are very vocal so they help in in solving such such issues and also cultural dispute so during important ceremonies and rituals the language performs key perform key functions adding to the legitimacy and what solemnity of events so the the ceremonial dispute okay so the ceremonial or the dispute in case there is what any dispute they ensure that what, they ensure that it is what it is solved okay the fact they ensure that there's what the the they perform what a key role in such function and adding what legitimacy and solemnity of event so yeah. let's look at another question which says that what the opinion on Nash, on on the notion that european colonization of africa saw the steady aggrandizement of what non-royal power and decline of what royal control over over people and resources so we are coming to look at this one so you know the european colonizations 
significantly what altered the traditional power dynamics in African societies. The colonial administration often undermined the authority of traditional rulers, opting instead of what instead to what uh, elevate non-royal individuals who were what more compliant with colonial interests. So the shift had what several impacts. So let's look at the shift. Now centralization of power. So colonizers centralize power within the administrative structures, reducing the influence and autonomy of chi. So we are looking at what the colonization process and how what it has reduced the, the, the functions of the chief. That's what the question is trying to say. So when you talk of centralization of power, before the chiefs, before the colonization era, the chiefs used to have very important rule, all right? But now, their functions are, are being what, taken, from, taken away from them, all because of centralization. Now, they say Ghana is practicing a central government, right? A government system where everything is what, uh, um, we are, we are what, Everything is being championed or probably uh, uh, taking decision are taken by the central government. The central government decide the kind of school fee, the kind of fees people should pay in the various senior high schools. The government decide the kind of things people should do. Do you get it? So now, if even if something bad happens, you, as a chief, you can't punish people. You can only what you can only watch because now the central government has taken over so there's what there was centralization at that moment that their functions their administration functions were taken away from them now the chiefs are what uh their functions are what, anachronistic anachronistic when i say anachronistic it is what irrelevant just some few chiefs that really have powers but most of the chiefs they don't have power to prosecute they don't have power to 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 even take money they don't have power to do so many things also um economic control so control over resources shifted to the colonial authorities and their appointed agent diminishing the economic power of chiefs and traditionally manage well, uh, okay chief who traditionally manage communal lands and resources so there also what there was also economic control the chiefs because they had access to sell lands and and also uh, 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 embark on projects. Now, there was what? A time that the the lands were taken from them, okay? The, the control of our resources shifted from what? The colonial authorities to the appointed agent. So they shifted the power from what? The chiefs to the appointed agents. So which what made the power or the, um, which made the authority of the chiefs diminish, okay? Or it became bare, right? So that is also one of the issues, and also social dis dis disruption. So the introduction of new social and political structures dis disrupted the existing balance of power, often leading to conflict and erosion of traditional governance systems. So the social eruption also what affected their functions. Also, we have what cultural what cultural changes so the imposition of Euro european cultural values and norms weaken the traditional institutions and, and practices that undermine the royal authority so when they introduce these uh, religions and really uh, the western culture to ghana and other african countries it weakened our chieftaincy system in, in in the country all right so you can also talk about other things that you think it has taken the functions of the chiefs from them making them their functions or making them anachronistic in the society okay you can only hear about chiefs whenever the president is going to visit in, visiting their society sorry if you're a chief here but that's the reality right mm, so it has made them what irrelevant in the society now chiefs don't even have power to do certain basic things right because of the centralization system so you can talk about any other ten point that you think it has taken the functions of the chief or those time it, it was making the chief powerful and now it's not really you can talk about their their military functions okay now their military function if some something happened they holding these chiefs used to uh, punish people but now there's no uh, they used to recruit a bra for the people the the people at the palace who prosecute others now it doesn't really it's it, it's not more in existence okay 
some some institutions or some chiefs does that, but they don't really have the power to prosecute like that. Um, apart from the military functions, uh, economic, social functions, political functions, religious functions, you can talk about that. You no know, religious function is no, it's also like that. That is it. Let's look at um, this question. It says that what we should write short notes on stool and what and priestess. So a stool is a symbol of authority and power among many African cultures, particularly in Ghana. It represents the soul of the people and the continuity of leadership. The stool is used during the instrument ceremony when new chief is what when new chief is installed. Sitting on the stool signifies the chief's acceptance of the rule and responsibility. The stool is reverent and often kept in sacred place. It is central to many rituals and ceremonies that affirms the chief's legitimacy and connection to the ancestors. So I've already explained the stool to you and I've given other some few details here to you. Okay. The stool normally what is a central to many rituals, okay, and it plays an important role okay to in, in, in i mean to the chiefs so that is also one of the things let's look at the relevance the relevance of what the relevance of of a, the, the stool okay to chieftaincy so the stool legitimize the chief's authority and serve as what a, a tangible link in the community's heritage and spiritual belief so when the chiefs when the chiefs are being installed okay it shows their acceptance okay and their legitimacy so it gives them some kind of authority to serve right that is the the, the important or the relevance let's look at the priestess then when we are done with this we are it is left with the last question to go it says that priestess so the priestess holds significant religious and spiritual authority in many african societies they act as what intermediaries between the people and the spiritual world so they perform rituals offer sacrifices and provide guidance based on their communication with deities and and what and ancestors so the priestess to their functions are what their functions are very very important and you can't what undermine their functions they act as intermediaries between the people and the spiritual world so whenever there's issue you can see you consult the priestess okay and, and, and ensure that they will ensure that the issue is resolved by consulting the deities and stuff. Also, they perform rituals, sacrifices, and so on and so forth. Let's look at their relevance. So, the priestess support the chieftaincy by performing essential religious functions and ensure the spiritual well being of the community. They also play a role in selection and installation of chiefs, adding their spiritual legitimacy to the of the chief tenancy so the priestess they also make sure that there's what the the they support the the chiefs right by consulting whenever you have if you have been watching this Ghanaian movie anytime there is issue the chief will visit the the priest and then all the the fetish priest and then they will do some conco uh, i mean uh, uh, cant uh, incantations and staff consult the gods and give some guidance so they always support the chiefs let's look at it see what is the role of islam in chieftaincy in west africa so we are going to look at the role of islam in west africa so one integration with what with traditional authority so in many west african societies islamic leaders or imams work alongside with traditional chiefs blending islamic and indigenous governance system so when I visited my community, I noticed there was what a Zongo chief, okay, and also um, um, the various tribes also had what had their 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 their, um, their chiefs. Do you get it? And and you know they support the chiefs in in the decision, okay, mobilize the people, okay. So the the, the that is one of the things, okay. So Zongo chiefs and the imams really do support the, the chieftaincy system in Africa. Also, legal influence. So Islamic law, that is sh Sharia, often coexists with customary law, providing 
a dual legal framework that influence judicial decisions and dispute resolution so the sharia actually what is the islamic law that that actually coexists with customary law so if there's anything that they don't understand they consult it and that is it also cultural practices so islamic practices and festivals are integrated are integrated into the cultural life of the community which is participating in or presiding over islamic events and ceremonies so they also would perform like some cultural practices in the society educational contribution also islamic education has what has historically what contributed to the literacy and intellectual development of many west african societies enhancing the administrative capabilities of traditional leaders okay and also we have political influence so political influence so islamic works with works and and what islamic networks and organizations provide what political support and legitimacy to chiefs reinforcing their authority and expanding their influence so they have that influence they have educational contributions they have cultural practices that really support chieftaincy they are legal or influence and also integration with what the traditional authority these are the points right so i'm done so please make sure you vote for j Lit and guru i'm also a marketer if you have a product you want to market if you have um, a business idea you want to start or anything you can consult me okay or you want to sell a product or you need any advice okay you want to start a business you will need some advice please reach out to me and i will assist you just like that my numbers are found there so this is what Chile's initiative the things he has done the the kitwebia inside initiative that has helped clear the outstanding debt for students okay and then also pleaded for post registration extension okay and and also he has what he has asked for what extension for what to extend medical examination this and many more we know um guru's contribution to the music industry in the country so his influence blended with jelly's academic support will make UG better again. Thank you, and I'll be bringing you another video on UJRC, UJRC 229, UJRC 231, and then um, that is also, I'm going to give you another, I'll also drop another video on information studies, both level 100 and 200. Thank you, God bless you all.